Hey everyone, Sly47 here. It's update day. Let's talk about the patch. What are my thoughts on everything and how it exactly changes my opinion on stuff. And let's talk about the new ships and everything uh, coming in this update. In the comments down below, let me know what your favorite part of this update is going to be and you know, what you're looking forward to and also maybe uh, what, what you're not looking forward to. So we'll find out. Right here, we got the USS Black in this amazing image right here. That's great, but let's get into the patch notes. Nation flag removal. Looks like they're going through and giving the login and you know select region page a little bit of a bump, a little bit of a, a refresh. Cool. You know, right? Cool. Epic commanders and skills. We have aerobatic maneuver plus and torpedo bomber expert. Plus, ah, torpedo bomber expert. So an actual CV commander. Hey, cool. Whatever. If that's your jam, you have one now for Japan as well. We have a Pan-Asian Commander, Exploit Weakness, and Night Raid, so you are going to have a, probably an additional Torpedo uh, Reload. But the Exploit Weakness, take it or leave it. It does help, but it doesn't always help as much as people like to think it does. We have the Crimson Shogun from Japan, Victorious Charge Plus, and Honor Seeker Plus. Once again, Victorious Plus, good. Honor Seeker Plus, eh, take it or leave it. It can help, but it's not something that you're going to be going for often. There's better skills overall. D Miller, we have... Air Defense Expert Plus and Recon Surveillance Plus. Cool if you have an AA ship with sonar. Like, that's that's what D-Miller is for. If you need him, go for it. That's pretty much what you're going to have, right? New tech line additions. We have the Destroyer Delny replacing the existing Kabaros. Kabaros is now a premium ship. You had to have it in your port. You didn't have to upgrade it or do anything or waste any blueprints. I would love them to refund us the blueprints we put on the Kaba. But, you know, that would be probably too nice. <laughs> but hopefully the Delny is good because it is a trash can class. And unless it's low in the water, pretty much it's, it's going to be some... Uh, some rough time, so hopefully the Delmi is good. Pan Asian cruisers are arriving in January 2023 with the Italian DDs coming up before them in full release. So, uh, of course, we're going, you know, you're going through them all. It, if you want, like, yeah, if you like deep water torpedoes and you like probably fire starters with some smoke, that's what I feel like they're probably gonna be like. So we've got like an American Atlanta class, probably a tier nine where I have something like the Delmi. And then, of course, at the top, I've heard there's a, just a crap ton of torpedoes. So, a lot of deep water torpedoes, a lot of damage here, but we'll see. I'm betting they're going to be pretty low health ships. On the premium ships, let's actually go through. I actually grabbed up a full bit of this. Uh, so, we have Carl von Schumberg. And with that, basically what seems to be an Elbing line premium at tier 6. Strong guns, 150s. Which the low tier, the tier 7 one, I believe is beloved by the community. So a lot of people do like that. So hopefully it can be good. Maybe there's actually a first pretty good German TD <laughs> premium. You know, but whatever. Next up we have the Tulin. So this ship over here, Cruiser, seems to only have, uh, I think it's four guns. But uh, two per mount. So pretty much a Dunker Cruiser that's got what looks to be pretty decent range and hard hitting 305s. The problem is, is that most 305s outside of Russian 305s are kind of dog crap. So hopefully this can be good because, of course, we are getting the French heavy cruiser line soon. Next up, we have the battleship Atlantico. So uh, tier eight Pan American battleship. So 381s at tier eight. Could be good. Could be good. This is just the information from PC. We don't have the exact information for Blitz. So We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out. Next up, a lot of people are definitely looking forward to this, but we do have the San Diego. So we're going to have to see how this works and translates over to Blitz. But a lot of people said, hey, maybe she might actually have good AA. And, you know, instead of being told that it's good AA like the kid and ends up being really crappy AA. So we'll find out. So we have the Gusapi Verdi. If I hope I didn't slaughter it. It seems like another Marco Polo maybe less broken oh. that's all i got from it like it it seems like a marco polo i don't know we'll find out that's basically what it's gonna be next up we have two ships that people a lot of people have been very interested in also fearing a little bit but we do have the small end so this is a more gun focused version of the holland i'm hoping it can be good 
I, I really do. I, like, I love the Holland. I've pretty much loved every single premium that has come out for the European DD line. It could be good. We'll find out. We'll, 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 we'll have to see. So, yep. And then finally, this is one ship that everyone's been like, yeah, but also I'm just like, oh dear Lord, how, how bad can they make it? Or how broken can they make it? We have the Slava. And pretty much this thing is known for just citadeling the crap out of high penetration, basically being a mix between a Kremlin and a Stalingrad. And if they can make it, who knows? Who knows? It could be, it could be a load of fun. We'll have to find out. But uh, also probably uh, sell your kidney now because it might be the cost of it. So let's move on to the limited ships. We do have the Black Hang He, which is just a HMS Aurora. Uh, and I thought... Eh, Hanging is not really anything to write home about, but this could be kind of fun. I do know we have the Black to Cow coming out in the Blitz Pass. I'm hoping that has some interesting new style. I don't know. We'll find out. Black Kansas. Uh, please give her. Please. Please give her Engine Accelerator. Just for the memes. Come on, make her the next Colorado. Just Black Colorado. Please. Please. It would be so stupid. And then we have Black Republic kind of broke if they give them the right thing because the republic is already incredibly strong but uh yeah the black republic yeah we'll find out <laughs> we'll see maybe it might be a really good camo like the black Yamato. hoping for that hoping for that unique camos of course for pretty much everything making sure it's all looking good bug fixes where's the where's the turret fix there wargaming and the dozens of other issues that we're having right here. <laughs> Come on, guys. Like, can we get can we get the images fixed? Where occasionally we get like Dutch, you know, Dead's Monies, or you know, a freaking Russian Worcester. Like, can we get that fixed? It just looks bad now. Oh, <sighs> but now onto the. This the most joyous time of the year, ship balancing, especially with a lot of ships these days, there's there's some issues. So let's go over them. Vladivostok and Ship Smasha, main battery firing range increased by 0.3 kilometers and main battery survivability plus 20%. Uh, cool, it's a little bit better. It's still a very inaccurate ship. It's not really well loved, but then again, it's also in a tier that's incredibly competitive. Such as Soyuz, an increase of health by, I think it's like 1300, increased in AP damage by 50, increased main firing range by 0.3 again, and then the survivability increased by 40%. I think what they're really trying to tell us is run reload mod, but the problem is the dispersion's bad enough. Overall, you'd want to run the dispersion mod. This doesn't fix the Soyuz. There was other fixes that it needed, and let alone, you know, maybe there's some hidden changes, maybe. Maybe we don't know everything yet, so hopefully, hopefully Hiromi and the entire CIC program uh, finds it out. Which, by the way, if you don't know about the CIC program, definitely go check them out. I'll put the link down below. Kremlin increased up by nearly 2,000 HP, which of course now, hey, you really should be running a lot of things to boost your health. You've got a, a pretty good amount of tankiness there. Torpedo protection increased by point 1.5 uh, percent. AP damage increased by I think it was like a total of 50. AP penetration uh, off the bat is increased by 4%. So that's actually a pretty powerful upgrade right there. And main gun survivability increased by 80%. I think you're going to see a lot of people trying out the Kremlin again because it is going to be a little bit tankier. Its AP is going to do a little bit more. I think that's a overall a good buff to the Kremlin. Does it fix its overall positioning? Really, I think it just more reinforces it, especially if you run auto aim off. That ship is absolutely amazing but it does take that higher up skill and I, I i'm hoping that this gives it enough of that reward that's 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 one thing battleship constellation uh decreased main battery reload by one second concealment decreased by like i think it was like 0.24 and then change out the engine accelerator for engine accelerator 2 this is just gonna make it even more of a crazy fast kansas uh, and the concealment maybe you actually can run a concealment build I'm actually definitely going to try it out because the Constellation, I already really do like it. If you play it like a heavy cruiser, you can have a lot of fun with it, but it's definitely not some meta pick even then because it's just so easy to hit and its armor is so thin. 
and because it's so easy to hit, you just you just can't miss. <laughs> you can't. You can't at all. Lepanto. These are the main things that people are talking about. These are the main nerfs that everyone is so excited about. Lepanto. You got the rapid or uh, the reload time increased by 1.5 seconds. Does that change Lepanto's position at all within the meta? Not really. Yeah, I think I think like overall it might prevent you from shooting off one extra salvo barely in a game and that's not saying much uh it still is going to be able to really almost nuke most dds if not nuke them depending on how much damage else that they've taken from other sources but lepanto is it's definitely just not going to be as broken i think this was not where they should have focused it where they should have focused their time on nerfing it uh, Christopher Columbo, let's talk about the, the elephant in the room here. We've got an increase of three seconds on its guns and removed the precise aiming skill one and made the scout, uh, the scout plane skill with one additional time per battle. So you can shoot further, less accurately, less often. That's, I think this, this is a way to go about the nerf. Because the problem was, is I was ex out exceeding almost everything else in damage. Now I think the Christopher Columbo and the Vermont are now the top tier, like clear top tier meta BBs with a little bit of the GK Montana, you know, quagmire in that of the middle of all the battleships. The Columbo is now just not as strong, but for anyone who's thinking doom and gloom, I should sell off my Columbo. Shh, no. No, your Columbo is still going to be perfectly fine. It's just not going to be as broken. And if you think that this Columbo is now nerfed all to get out and you can't play it anymore, go back to your small lens like you should have a while back, okay? Zeton. We've got the AP battery, or yeah, main battery AP damage increased by 50 from the Zeton. Cool. Zeton, Zeton kind of made sense to buff it. It's these next ones that don't make sense. The Prince Rubric get a AP increase. Good, they were already one of the lowest in their tiers. It kind of helps them move up a little bit in the pack, so I'm fine with that. Main battery increase as well. Main battery reload time decrease. Secondary battery auto chance of setting fire is increased by 0.5, which of course they already fire an insane fast rate, so that's that's a buff. That's a big buff. Average deck armor increase to uh, from 70 to 76 and change the uh, secondary overload 2 to secondary overload 3, but reduce 1 usage per battle. That will get fixed, hopefully, whenever Wargaming decides to do a uh, commander rework. Someday. Someday, everyone. We'll, we'll find it. We'll find it someday. But overall, Prince Rework, it was already a pretty good tier 9. It, it was one of the things that was, it has its niche. It's still a very niche battleship because it, they didn't increase the accuracy at all. So definitely at least it's main batteries can do a little damage per game but it's not really doing that much more and the auto firing chance that's where that's where i really believe that this buff is really coming in strong because this thing is a gatling cannon on each side of it and if you increase the fire chance then it's just gonna be even more deadly schlieffen got a buff one uh 1.5 K in terms of health increase and HE shell damage increase. I think that makes sense because sometimes you're getting a little bit close on it with them with DDs. You might have HE loaded. Main barity AP increase as well, but a little bit more than the other ones. I think that is 70 over 50 compared to the other tiers. We've got the secondary battery auto firing range increased and the fire chances increased. So now the Schlieffen, I believe, with the buff from mod 2 for the secondaries you should be almost the moment that you can fire your secondaries and the moment they spot you your auto secondaries should pretty much start up and that's with that fire chance increase that's incredibly strong average deck armor increase that is kind of a mixture right here the problem is that also might mean you might get more full pens from battleships or heavy cruiser guns so make sure you get in range. If you get caught out too early, it might uh, it might have a bit of a problem. Rudder shift time decreased. That's a big, big buff right there to help it out as well. Make it be able to dodge those, dodge the torpedoes as well. Dodge fire a little bit better, but then most importantly, also get its torpedoes out. Because of course, it's mine layering, it's albing torpedoes. You just got to send them out. So overall, Schlieffen, Prince Rupert, they were already pretty playable. Anyone complaining about them, really, I think we're just 
probably trying to shoot at long range with them, so it wasn't a good idea in the first place. Now at least their niche gets a little bit stronger. But yeah, these these two were still and still are amazing ships. Now they're just a little bit better at their niche and a little bit tankier, which is probably going to help most players be able to play them in, in a more uh, standard capacity. Marlboro, we've got HE damage increased. Cool, it's, uh, yeah, that's that's a big buff. We got Traverse Speed Increase. This is the big one. This is the big one, because Marlboro's turrets were, mol like, greased with molasses. They were horribly slow, so I'm so happy about this. Man Battery and Fire Range Increased from 12.54 uh, uh, to 12.9 kilometers. Uh, and then if they also did a Main Battery Shell Dispersion Decrease by 4%, which tends to do a Sigma change. So overall, Marlboro will now be, I'd say, pretty darn good. I, I hope they didn't buff it too much, because the problem is Marlboro at times was still pretty strong. But yeah, it, it, it Marlboro might actually be worth picking up, definitely, after this. And I'll have to play with it. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be streaming later on. So Haida. We got the torpedo reload decrease from 53 seconds to 50 or 47 seconds. Nice. The torpedo changes or chance. God, I cannot talk today. <laughs> torpedo chances for causing flood. Why don't you just call it torpedo flooding chance? Why do you have to make this so hard work? I mean, <laughs> from 15 to 17 and uh, gave uh, fuel smoke one an initial use per battle. This isn't the complete fix that I have for the Hyatta. But overall, I think this puts it in at least a little bit better position, maybe more playable, not trash. So thank you for giving the hiatus at least a little bit of something more gaming. Thank you. Paulo Emilio. Rudder shift time decreased by 0.9. Changed the engine accelerator skill from 3 to 4. And then fixed a bug where the torpedo chance was actually 20, 23%. And now it's 33%. This is pretty much the biggest buff out of all of this and that says something because the Apollo Emilio has so many other problems that neither of these really fix. The 5.1 seconds on rudder shift time helps. Engine accelerator 4 helps but it's so massive at tier 9. Such short torpedoes. Its guns are meh. Nah, like they can hurt. They hurt other DDs but they don't do a lot to it. It the YOLO Emilio is still not the YOLO Emilio in this game. It's just not there yet. Z44, increased torpedo damage by 200, increased flooding chance by 2%, and increased the torpedo speed by 3%. This is a lot of quality of life changes overall, actually, to the Z44, because, of course, German DDs are not really known for their torpedo damage. But overall, to me, torpedo damage, they increase flooding chance, speed, quality of life now z44 might actually have a reason to pick up instead of just going for the z46 because it was just kind of blatantly easier and free <laughs> easier to get in free yeah saint louis increased the acceleration time same thing with the Henri to kind of pretty good times why these were changed no idea, but you want to know what with the minnow changes of over the last few updates and a few other changes, like the Schlieffen getting a buff. The Henri just needs a, you know, negative, like a whole second off reload, right, Wargaming? Come on, just make that happen. Just just make it happen. <laughs> so Henri definitely doing a lot better. Now you might be able to use that speed a little bit easier. So I, I think these are good. I don't see what warranted it, but yeah, whatever, whatever. Puerto Rico, increase in health by 800, increase in torpedo protection by 3%, main battery firing range increase, and change radar 1 to radar 2. Puerto Rico is already in a great state. Already in a just fantastic shape overall. But with these buffs, it's now going to be in a very strong shape. This definitely puts it into good. You now have the range, you have a, a little bit better on the skills. But you also can tank a little bit better with torpedoes, which was kind of your worst enemy overall. The shell damage did hurt, but because you have such long length, torpedoes definitely hurt. So getting a little bit less health off of that will really help out the Puerto Rico. With the Ager, torpedo damage increase, torpedo range increase, and torpedo flooding chance increase. Not gonna lie. Um, 
Wargaming? What is this about? Because the Ager needs a lot of other things. <laughs> it needs a lot of other things. This can help. Can. Where's the Turpets buff? <laughs> no, the, the, for the people who enjoy the Ager, or a Ager, however you want to say it. Uh, yeah, you, you got your torpedoes better, even though the rest of the ship needed a little bit of love instead. But, you know, after the Henri and the Shalifan ones, we're just kind of just whatever we're gaming. You're, you, we're, we're kind of in for it for the ride, as long as the Columbo gets nerfed, right, everyone? <laughs> the Napoli. So this ship, I, I do enjoy it. It has its issues, but they are buffing the secondary uh, battery firing range increased by 0.6. Reload time decreased by 0.5 and auto range up to six kilometers. I think that's amazing. The problem is, is that these sap guns are pretty much not usable on anything that has decent armor. So that is nice. It makes it a little bit better at hunting down DDs or maybe light cruisers. But overall, it's a quality of life. It, it does help, but it's... There's still other things with the sap secondaries that really kind of screw with them. Torpedo damage increased by 100 each. The reload time decreased by 6 seconds. This is one of the better ones because of the Italian torpedoes are just absolutely fantastic. You can just send them out. They are non-discretionary. You just you just go. So I, I think this is overall one of the better parts of the upgrade, especially since the torpedo range is so large. You're just able to send those out and stay even stealthed up pretty well. And then Fuel Smoke 3 instead of Fuel Smoke 2. Napoli, I think, has definitely gotten the buffs similar to that of the Puerto Rico where it needed stuff, it needed help. I don't think the Napoli is completely perfect like the Puerto Rico now is and definitely in good state, but the Napoli is definitely well out of niche. I think it, it will be able to use this and be a pretty strong contender in a lot of games, but not completely due to those sap secondaries. So, like, low good. Low good for me. But that is it for the patch notes today. Uh, kind of sad that the turret fix wasn't mentioned in there. Maybe tomorrow we're going to find out that the turrets are fixed and they just forgot to mention a key critical bug fix in the patch notes. We'll, we'll find out together on stream later on, actually today when this video goes live. But hopefully everything's working with the update pretty well. Secondly, before I go... If you haven't seen the announcement and you haven't actually go check it out, I will make sure the links, of course, are in the description down below. But Pig Bay and I started a whole new podcast series. This time we talked about hey, where our main accounts are, what games are we playing, and a little bit of a fun naval history and going over it in our own ways while uh, maybe enjoying a little bit too much fine liqueur. <laughs> it was an absolute blast. Go check it out there. We put it up on multiple podcast podcasting sites, and we will, of course, and continue to grow if I can talk as you can tell today I just can't talk today <laughs> but hope you all enjoyed today's video like the video it definitely helps out the channel subscribe if you haven't hit that notification bell for whenever you want to see a new video go live all of my links of course are in the link tree down below for any part join up on discord go over support up on patreon special shout out to the patreon for helping make this channel possible hopefully everyone have a good day see you all in the ICs and enjoy the the new update hopefully Hopefully it's good. <laughs> Peace.